Okay, girls. So let's start by having a look at the um, drum pattern worksheet. And what I've got over here, if we just focus on this top one, we've got um, the, the main components of the drum kit, which is the bass drum, the snare drum, the hi-hat, and the cymbal. And in fact, I've just noticed that all of these ones, you can have them on the cymbal, but instead what I want to have them so that they're actual um, patterns that we hit on the hi-hat. So like a standard rock drum pattern will have all of this repeated over and over again. So I'll just put it over here. So what this shows us is that we hit the bass drum on beat number one, and at the same time we hit the hi-hat with the right hand. And then we hit the hi-hat again, snare drum and hi-hat together, hi-hat again, and so on. In terms of how to notate this, because what we want to do is get this pattern and put it into musical notation when you compose. So we need to know what the key is for converting this into actual written drum music. So on this sheet, you've got the bass drum, and notice that over here you've got two lines, so you don't use a treble clef or a bass clef. You've got these two lines. Yep. You can wash your hands quickly go. Um, so you've got the um, the percussion clef that they use when they're writing drum music or say if they've got maracas or bongos or whatever. And then the way that they do it is that where the note F normally goes, if you see a note in there, it's going to be the bass drum. And where the note C usually goes, it's going to be the snare drum. There are some variations with this, so sometimes they move them around. Um, and the example I'll give you is that over here, the hi-hat, you see that it's written in the E space, but on note flight, when we get to it, it actually has the hi-hat on the G space. So especially with the cymbals, they kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, and sometimes when you get a piece of music, they'll actually put this at the beginning to tell you exactly what they mean. So what we're going to do is that every time we have one of these in here, we're going to hit an F note. And every time we have a... Um, snare drum over here, we're going to hit one of these C notes. So we're going to begin with that. I'm going to go to note flight. And remember that for us, the address is sirdon college marylandsnoteflightcom If you just go straight to noteflight.com, it logs you into their main site and doesn't log you into the Sirdon site or it won't even let you through. So go to sirdon college marylandsnoteflightcom and I'm going to click on new score. And unfortunately, when you load up a new score, it doesn't give you the option of putting in drums straight away. So it's not one of these ones here. It has percussion, but it doesn't actually have the drums in there. So we're going to start with just a blank score. Um, and it normally puts in like a percussion clef and so on. But we need to add an instrument. So I'm going to click up to here. Oops. I'm going to click on there where it's got instruments. And then I'm going to click on percussion. Uh, sorry, add instrument and I'm going to find unpitched percussion, and I want to scroll down until I find the drum, the standard drum kit, and click on that, and go OK. And in the new interface, what's really cool is that I want to get rid of this one because I only want the drums, so I'm just going to click on the trash can over here to delete the percussion line. So there we go. So, I mentioned that we needed to have a... Um, bass drum and then a snare drum. So our pattern does on beat one, bass drum, and a snare drum on beat two, beat three is a bass drum, beat four is a snare drum. So I want to go over to here, I'm going to click on, make sure that you've got duration activated. So if you click on the menus, make sure duration is there so that you can actually find the different values. I'm going to click on the rest, turn it so it's a quarter rest or a crotchet note, and I'm simply going to type in the note F, and we hear a bass drum. And then I want to type in a note C, but it does it an octave lower. So to, you can either move the arrows and bring it up like that, um, or one quick way to do it is that if you press um, command and up arrow, it actually jumps up an octave immediately. So that's a quick way to do it. So I want to go F again. Oops. And notice how it's done it as a minimum in that example. So I'm going to convert that to a crotchet again. And there we go. So at the moment, this is what I've got. So I've just got the bass drum, snare drum, bass drum, snare drum. I now need to add another layer so that I can include the hi-hats in there as well. 
and the hi hats are simply going one and two and three and four and or quaver, quavers, 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 all put together. And normally with drum music, what they tend to do is that the bass and the snare drum, they make the stems point down and the hi-hats and the cymbals, often they make the stems point up. It's just a differentiator a little bit. Sometimes you see them together, quite often you see them separated. So to separate them, you need to use what's called layers. Sometimes when they write music on one staff, they actually have layers of sound, so some things point upwards and some things point downwards. To do that, you go to voice, and notice how it gives you, you can have an upper voice and you can have a lower voice. And so what I want to do is click away from there. Um, by the way, the shortcut for voices, if you just simply type the letter U or the letter L, U for upper and L for lower, it actually does it for you. So I'm just going to type, uh, click away, and I hit my duration there. Let's bring that back. And I'm going to uh, click here and simply go U because I want to add an upper voice. And what it's done, it's put a rest there. So it's put everything that I've already put pointing down, it's saying that's gonna be your lower voice. We wanna now add the upper voice, and I need all quavers. And if I go back to my key, remember that I mentioned that the key here is slightly different. It's got it on a knee, but we need it up on a G note. So I wanna go back to here and simply um, put in a note. There it is there, so that's the hi-hat I want. You can, you can have all the different symbols, but I just want that. And I want a whole stack of those. So I'm typing the letter G because that's the note that I want. And now I have this, uh, let me just do it like this. We have that, and if I bring this one down here, oops, what I've got now is that I've effectively transferred this grid onto here. So that one is represented by that. That snare drum is represented by that. These ones up the top here are represented by this. And if we play all of that, I'll just make this screen larger. If we play it, I've got a pattern. Now, what's really cool is that when you're doing your composition, you can grab, um, you can grab this and simply cut and paste across. So I'm just going to Command C, Command V, and now all of a sudden I've got two bars of it. Or keep on doing it. And now I've got four bars of the same drum pattern. And I've got the basis of my drum pattern for my composition. Now, really quickly, here's the um, second pattern that I've done. And let's move all of these down because I don't want them on the symbol. So let's drag them down. Oh, I've done it again. Sorry, I've got to select these like this. And I should be able to grab one and drag it down to here. That's what I want. So. If you have a look carefully, the only difference, or what I want to do, and I think in the example that we listened to, we had um, we had Beat It, and we had, what was the other song that we listened to? Billie Jean. And in the song uh, Beat It, the pattern does this, so it does that for the first bar, and then for the second bar, it goes one, two, and four. So that one gets moved from there to there. What that means is that instead of having the crotchet there, we're going to put a quaver because it's used up half a beat, and we're going to put a single quaver over here. So I'm going to go back and change my drum pattern. So I've got bass drum, oops, bass drum, snare drum. Let's press stop. There we go. Sna uh, bass drum, snare drum, and this one I'm going to change it so it's a quaver rest. Oops, and let's put it there and I'm going to delete that one because I don't want that one. So now I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. And uh, I want to copy, because in the song it does that pattern there and it does it over here, so I want to cut and paste it. And all we've done is move that one across by half a beat and have a listen to the, the effect it gives. Pretty cool, hey? All right. Any questions? So for your assignment, what we encourage you to do is use the basics because that's what happens. And we, we gave the example, Billie Jean, um, what was it again? 
beat it. Billie Jean beat it. Just use these patterns. It's pretty straightforward. So if it's okay for Michael Jackson, I think it's all right for us to use it as well. And experiment by putting X's in different spots and see what patterns you come up with.